benefits. I get it. Uh, the only type of calcium I learned that will restore what was removed, that you know how as we age we have to be careful with. Yeah. yeah. With, uh, what do they call it? Osteo Osteoporosis. Plant-based calcium. Right. Well, oh, it's the only one to. that will restore whatever, right. cal yeah, whatever bone density was lost. Right. I just started taking that. Yeah, I have taken I, I just started taking that only because I was noticing some something with it. I did my root canal yesterday. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. And so, you're fine today? Yeah. Oh, I love my guy. If you guys need a good dentist, Dr. Chai in Bradford is something else. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I will drive to see All him. All right. Bye. And he does everything on the spot. Like if it needs a cap, he does everything. Right. Your nice broadcasters are on. Yay, oh. I'm just waiting because yeah. I know the Mo, is Mo actually coming? Uh, cool. Okay. Because it's not I, like I, a long call. Yeah. 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 No, that's all. So you're going to call him to get yeah, or arrange. So that's a, a little bit to see if people, because you know. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Oh, oh, sorry. One other thing. You know the uh, the uh, Josh with some uh, yeah, with his, sorry with the stamped yeah, exactly. permit drawings. He has them in the okay. black. Um, Cabinet. You grew up and enjoy. Enjoy. So the, the black beauty mark did Jesus. Did you do it? And it was dying for that's what I was gonna do. And then you said it, and I'm like, I told yeah, you. Yeah, sure. It's an Italian thing. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you know how we are women, we're terrible, right? And I'm like, just nope. color it. Make oh, it look like a mole. Right? Right? Look like a mole. And she started laughing. Oh my god. I was like, she said what I was gonna do. But she was worried because I it was too big. And I said, well, my DG has like a big honking mole. It's the size of um, a coffee yeah. uh, bean. And it looks beautiful. I have to say it looks beautiful on her, the way it's situated. It's actually pretty. Yeah. You know, because it's like over the brow as opposed to like right. Like that, right? So, yeah. so you definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> Okay, we're supposed to be having a few more people. Well, let me try to pretend that this isn't here. Uh, 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 What's interesting is there's like all kinds of chit chat that goes on in the air. I don't know what that's all in there. Really? The, the computer's talking in there. Okay, these are from the clipper. So let's see here. I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm all gone. Read it here. And it's here. Sarah. No, that's not Sarah. Wendy is here. And Cecilia and Keisha. Oh, so what's your name? Because you don't look like a Keisha to me. Nicole. Oh, you're Nicole. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're definitely not Keisha. Um, okay. okay. So Emo on his way. He didn't respond. He did name. He was on the Hi, how are you? <laughs> you know what? Take a video. No, where are you? Take a video and send it to him. Maybe that'll do it. Okay, let's get started. Um, has anybody uh, done open houses I I so far? Had, what was your experience? You know, the, uh, so, um, I did a couple. And so we'll be all in one um, thing. Um, I guess in day. the beginning, like and September or whatever, day. after the summer, they were good. Mm -hmm. And I've done a couple recently okay, that you. have been brutal. Right. Okay, so tell me why you no traffic. No traffic. That's a common thing, right? So what you guys done? You've done open house, you've done open house. No. Anybody else? No. Not yet? Okay. So how what do you do? So if I were to come in, what what would you do? How would you handle me? I would introduce myself, mm -hmm. say, you know, can you please come sign in? Mm -hmm. Um I don't want to sign in. Well, <laughs> I know. I, I have a problem with that. Like when people are like, <laughs> they argue about it. And I'm going to give you a solution today. Okay, good. Okay. How, how about yourself, Netta? When you're doing an open house, how do you find that? Uh, it was pretty stressful at the third time for me. Why stressful? Because um, as always, I, I felt I don't have enough knowledge to take the people in. Okay, so it's the stress two, that you create yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so after two people comes and go, I was okay. okay. Uh, at the first, I start following them and trying to show them everywhere, and then I realize I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> so I did I, I a solution for that as well, because doing an open house 
is um, is an opportunity to sell the home and it's an opportunity to meet some people, right? So today what you've got in your booklet is you've got a checklist. I have put some items in there. Um, just to, to give you an idea, okay? So you really almost don't have to do any notes. You just got to listen because I, I love it when my when my agents listen and have fun because that's how you that's, remember, right? And that's how to hold an open house because, you know, it's, you look relaxed. Exactly, and exactly, okay? So let's start. Okay, so pre-open house. These Here is your checklist here of the items that you should be doing. Now, Wendy, you man mentioned traffic and having a difficulty with traffic. Mm -hmm. um, how many open house signs did you put out out of curiosity? Well, before the new rule, mm -hmm. which is only three in Braun now, and none, I think, in Richmond Hill. Really? They put that now out? There's a new rule, yeah. Well, you know what? Well, how are we supposed to do our jobs? Like, and it can't be on the that boulevard. Doesn't, that doesn't sound right to me. I know. I have to ask Adam. Yeah, um, it, it doesn't sound it, right. But they were freaking out last week because we would, they would plummet the area, right? right? And so they would have a lot and they would get good traffic. And ever since, there's a new rule, which says only three signs. Like, that doesn't sound right I call. Me. Actually, maybe I still have the email thing. Already. You know what? The thing is, too, there's always going to be a way around it. Right. Okay. And and guys, we gotta still do our jobs. Like, don't don't worry too much about things. So maybe if the rule has to do with those sandwich boards, mm -hmm. but if you guys go get those other type of open house signs where you just stick them in the lawn, now at least it, it's we're not frozen, so you guys can actually easily stick. You know which ones I'm talking yeah. about? Those open house signs. So and also what people were doing, which is not which is not right, they were leaving them there. And I believe the rule addresses that. Okay. Yes. Because if you're going to have them out there for an afternoon, who's gonna stop you from doing something like right. that? That's to do an open house, that's to do business. But I believe that things would would address keeping the signs up because a lot of agents were doing that. Or they would put the open house signs before, which is all misleading, and those are against the rules. The other thing that you're supposed to be doing is on your open house, you're supposed to put the time right. and the address so that there's no confusion. So make sure that your open house signs have that information on there, okay? So let's let's talk about mapping the area. So you had, how many signs did you put out when you didn't get uh, traffic? Let's never mind Three. the rules. Three? Okay. And where did you put the signs? Um, look at the main intersections leading into the property. So this one particularly was fairly easy because it was right off Duck River Keel mm -hmm. and it was right off the road and then came from the other way and then one on the corner. On the the key is to use a minimum of six to ten open house signs because there's no way, because one sign has to go out front of the house, correct? Yes. Which technically leaves you with two signs. But can't you put an open house on? So then you had four signs. You had three sandwich board or three signs. Right. And then an open house right. rider. Okay, right. so that's four. Okay. Okay. So now you've got three that are out there, and that's still difficult to bring traffic in on the most part. So yeah. this is what we're going to talk about. Six to ten signs. Now, we're, you know what, there's, there's, Ladies, those of us that are ladies that are listening here today, because there's people in the on the web listening, it's always a bit of a challenge to you know be dressed up and haul these sandwich boards and things like that, right? And go back and forth in the heels and so on. So I get, I do get that. Um, so there are there are ways though, like make sure you're wearing there's some flat shoes when you're doing that. Don't you know? Don't uh, don't stress yourself out, and don't forget those signs that you can just stick into the ground. Those are, if you get a good one, it's nice and easy. And if someone steals them, it's no skin off your nose, okay? And it's easy now to carry 10 in your trunk. It's easy to handle putting 10 signs out, okay? And it's inexpensive. You can get those open house type of signs anywhere. The Toronto Real Estate Board shop, uh, store will have them. Uh, most uh, print shops will do them as well, okay? But just remember to have a spot to put the time and the address, okay? All right, so we'll talk about mapping the area in just a second. Marketing material, be informed. What do I need to bring advertising your open house? So let's talk about mapping the area first, okay? 
So you see, let's say here, this address here, 33 Oatlands Crescent. Everybody can see that, that clearly, right? So if I have 10 signs, here's Regent Fathers. Regent goes all the way. And then of course, good morning, Mo. We tried to wait for you, no worries, no worries. And then you can see that, you know, Regent goes all the way over here to Oxford and then to Elgin Mills. So where am I going to bring traffic in? If I want to maximize, if I want to maximize what's oh, happening, that's where am I going to put my signs? So Wendy, just to, if I can mm -hmm. play, okay. So if you have four signs, where are you putting them? So I would put one at Elgin Mills, right? In Regent. Mm -hmm. I would put one at Bathurst in Regent. Okay. I would put one where that, in the middle, like region, where so there's a port. Right, but I would put one where there's a whole bunch of streets coming into region, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I would put one leading into. So you've got this over there. here, yeah. and look at how much you have to travel. Look at that loss. No, back, go back, and back. Mm -hmm. I would put some. Well, Elgin Mills is there. up here. Yeah, and then I would put one in the Bathurst middle. Bathurst is over here. Yeah. There, like back a little bit. Right, I get that, but just see how difficult it is, right? It's difficult. And then what about, you know, someone coming on Elgin? I would Ellery. do there too, yeah. Okay. So now that's if you had more than three right. signs. Right. Okay. Ellery is a pretty busy street. Just so you can see, guys, there's all these opportunities that mm -hmm. you're going to miss yeah, if you're not using enough on signs. On site, so or? are you turning off the cooling or are you uh, turning it on? No, I'm not. Thank you. I'm glad. I mean, oh, is I have it. I have the it. light green? Yeah. If it's green, it's on. No, it's on. Yep, it's on. You got the cooling system on. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. I know because it's a little bit stuffy, right? Thank you, Mel. Also, the energy here is so right. high. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what the challenge is. Yes. So ever since you walked in the room. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was hot. Today. <laughs> okay, All of a sudden, Mo walks Thank in so and the room is hot. <laughs> Thank you, Mo, for, for that. <laughs> so you can see then what we're talking yeah. about, right? So if you just are putting out a couple of signs, you're missing all this traffic here that would be coming from uh, Elgin Mills. Over in this situation here, Oxford is a pretty busy intersection as well. You don't want to miss out on that. Um, there are other ones as well in between here, like I said, Ellery in here. And not to mention that 33 Oatlands is a crescent. So we're going to miss out if we do it only on one side, right? You might miss out some. So you want to make sure that you're captivating. So how many signs do we put out? Six to ten. Six to ten. You want to take the time out to, to map where it is that you're going to be putting signs prior to. But now let's be honest, because I know when I was younger and, and, and new in this business, I didn't map nothing. I got there last minute. I put out a couple of signs. Oh, this looks like a good spot to put a sign. And this, I didn't plan it. I'm not saying that I did it on purpose like that. It's just I was never trained properly on it. And then it was, I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way how to do it, okay? All right, so let's keep going. Marketing material, because remember we were saying marketing material is important, so without looking, okay, don't, don't cheat guys, okay? You tell me, what kind of marketing material would you be needing? Mo, do you have a handout? No. Okay. Marketing material, what type of marketing material would you need? Open house invitation. Open house invitation, okay, did you read that? <laughs> Open house invitation. Feature sheets. Feature sheets. Um, uh, every your business card, every advertisement that you there for the open house. All right, business cards. You want to be prepared. Now, Mo, you mentioned open house invitations. What am I going to do with these invitations? Give it to the people that are coming there? No. Uh, no. Okay. Before the open house, like on the same day or the day before, uh -huh. you can go to that neighborhood and knock the doors and invite all the neighbors, because one of the most, uh, one of the best potential buyers could be the neighbors. Also, maybe sometimes they're noisy, noisy neighbors. Which is good, yeah. but nosy neighbors are always good because there's still word of mouth advertising, right? And not on, not only that, but usually nosy neighbors 
um, are there thinking about making with themselves? Yeah. So you just don't know, okay? So let's go over here. Open house invitations, feature sheets, social media flyers. What does that mean? Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Right? We see a lot of our agents posting on their Facebook, on their Instagram, on their stories now. Come see me over here. Yes. And the good thing about social media uh, flyers, you can choose a specific area, uh -huh. the radius, like mm -hmm. one kilometer, whatever, around that house. So you don't need to waste your money for, you have an open house in Richmond here, yes. so it's because it's random, maybe someone in Scarborough going to see your uh, You're ad, right. so it doesn't work. So You're you right. can use exactly the same you radius can around the house. Very good point, I'm so glad you mentioned that. And how much does it cost you to do something like that? It's 30 okay. plus something for one week. Yeah. I recently I promoted one of my Instagram. It is like four days right now, and I got so 1,600. And see, you know what? Even if they're not like you, good. At least they see you. And then eventually they keep seeing you and and you become familiar to them. It's a start. Yes, I just sold a house from my Facebook ad. You see? Coming soon to MLS and they gave it early. Yeah. I, I and never got to MLS. Social oh. media oh. today is what uh, the local newspapers used to be right. many years ago when I was a new agent. I used to get so much business off of just writing an ad. And now social media is doing that. Yeah. But we have to know how to use it. And and to Mo's point, it's a good idea that you put it within a certain radius, a certain uh, demographic. Yes, yes Frida. So what is that that you target today on your uh, when you when you're gonna promote your ad on Instagram? Oh that's Instagram. Yeah, this is in Instagram. So you can also you can choose the um, uh, the range of the agency because that's going to be yeah. for example you don't need to see your ad by the kid like five years ten years twelve years it doesn't so always I choose the rent average range between like 22 to 65 or plus whatever because believe it or not social media features everything so true guys you know what there's some noise coming I think someone has locked on has not muted themselves. So let me just mute. Okay. If uh, if uh, those at home can hear me, please mute yourself because we can hear what's going on in your home. Okay. Because I won't be able to do it. That mouse doesn't work. Okay. So social media flyers, business cards. Now let's let's get creative because these are the standard. Okay. These are the standard. Okay. And what other things could you bring? Just let's think outside the box for a moment. Yes. Well, what I wanted to do when I had sold, but I was going to print off like um, stuff that's going on in the area, mm -hmm. like you know, like the oh. Viva train piece, yes, like what's happening with construction and we're all that, that kind of stuff. We're going to get to that in a second. I'm talking about marketing yourself, oh. right? Which is, and I'm glad that you mentioned that, Wendy. We're just going to hold that thought for a second. Yes, Mo. So when you send an invitation. Uh huh. For example, you can invite them to your wife is uh, cheese and wine, right? Yes. So you can buy a bottle of wine, a couple of people can buy some little cheese, something like that. And also make sure to uh, have the enough papers for registration and pen or pencil, whatever. We're going to get to the administration side in a second. That's part of that. That's all good. I'm talking about marketing yourselves. So this is where I want to get you to think outside of the box. You can actually use open houses as a lead generating system. And so how would you do that? Now, Mo, you mentioned open house invitations, right? right. So you could just go to door to door and say, hey, listen, I'm doing an open house. Now, what if you were to say something like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to be taking emails because I'm going to do a draw for a big screen TV, an iPad lottery tickets come to my open house to get your free lottery tickets okay exactly okay now I'm gonna take it another in another direction I used to coach an agent in Atlanta Georgia so sometimes they, they have like quite a bit of hot weather it's a little unbearable at that time and or certain times of year I should say and she always had ice cream and they were just these you know these packages mm -hmm. that she would take out of the freezer as people would leave she would give them ice cream. 
And so I remember when I first coached her, she started it out as um, as a courtesy. She was saying, oh, I think it would be cute to, you know, like to, you know, it's a nice thing to do to send people off. Good feeling thing, right? Mm -hmm. Then she found that people were coming to her open house just, just, to, just to get ice cream. And, and she was saying, oh my God, it's so disgusting that they do that. And I said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. They were, they're remembering me. They're coming in. That's a contact, right? So people got to know. So she started, she started doing these types of things because now on purpose. So the ice cream started having her label on it, her information on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it started to be a little bit different. And then she started advertising, come see me, grab some ice cream and enjoy your day. We started advertising it. Then she would take, she would pretend to have extra ice cream left over from her open house, bring it to a local um, park where they're doing, um, you know, soccer, t uh, soccer uh, games with the kids and baseball games with the kids. And she would ask the parents if it would be okay if she left this free ice cream for the kids. So we started using it as a lead generation. Okay, so now that's ice cream. You guys can do anything. When it comes to real estate, I'm going to give you always the bare necessities, the facts that you need. Okay, what I want you guys to always do is play. How can I use this as a lead generation, generating opportunity? Because that's the beauty of real estate is we have that opportunity, okay? So just things for, you know, just things to think about, okay? What kind of things could you market yourself with? Like to have fun, okay, no worries, no worries, sometimes it happens. So um, what kind of things? Like you wanna give a handout stuff, what, do you want to, what, what could you hand out? So we talked about ice cream, and I'm not talking about having a refresh. What else could you do? Someone's not in the closet. That's just whoever is at home listening. Uh, is and is that, I know I saw Mo's eyes. It's Are like, you sure? It's not a ghost. I'm pretty certain. Um, no, the system, when, when people log in with, with the Zoom, you can hear them unless they mute themselves. So that's what that's what we're hearing in the closet. It's so, it's so eerie and fun. <laughs> like, do you mean like say if it's around Halloween, you can hand out mini pumpkins, right? Or Christmas time, you can hand out like something Christmassy. Totally, exactly. Mm -hmm. There was uh, an agent who's now quasi retired now, but I remember when she was first starting out, she was out in Vaughan, and uh, it was uh, Sue Massa, and I remember going to one of her open houses, and it was off of Melville. Like I remember it like that because she made such an impression. Now she used to have a slogan, sell with soup. And of course the S was the dollar sign. So sell and then with soup with the, you know, with the, uh, with the dollar signs, right? And uh, at every open house, she had giveaways. Like, you know, when you go to a wedding mm -hmm. and they give like these, I don't know, in Italian, we call them bomaniere. I don't know what you call them otherwise. You guys know Effects what it is. Or <laughs> party favors, favors. Part, yeah, party, favors. party favors, right? And so she would give away stuff like cheese. I remember um, I got, and I, I think I still have it too. It was um, a cheese slicer. And, uh, and I didn't want to take it. I said, no, Sue, leave this for your clients, right? Like for people that, you know, don't waste it on me. I'm an agent. I'll still bring you pizza. She says, no, no, no. I want you to take one. And I was like, wow. And she probably went to the dollar store, grabbed these things. Mm -hmm. She packaged them in the little cellophane. Put her business card, Sal was Sue, because her business card was, was branded as well. And she did it with a curling ribbon, made it look pretty, and everybody got one when they came. Who doesn't like that? It's a good feeling. Like, look how much I remembered. And I'm an agent. I'm not even, a, you know, a potential buyer or seller. So if it left that kind of impression. Imagine what it would leave there. Now, I don't want you guys breaking the bank. There's all kinds of things that you can do, right? And people will get to know that you will have something and they will purposely come if they see you just for the goodies. And who cares? Who cares? The other thing one can do um, is water bottles. The water bottles, like if you take something like this, for instance, you bring it to our marketing department, they will take like the nutritional value on here, like the ingredients and the nutritional value and where the source of the water as well. And they will copy that, they'll make it part of the label and the other part of the label will be you. So you remove this and you put the label on for your, for your own, with your own photo and whatever. 
can hand those out. And the nice thing too is if you do open houses and you do, you know, they've got the little bottles, even if you do a bottle like this, right? If you have, you know, a lot of people come through the open house, you've got water, but otherwise you put it back in your trunk, you go back and forth, like you don't have to worry. If you're purchasing coffee, because I remember I purchased coffee as part of my refreshments, um, and sometimes, you know, I was left with leftovers, yeah. This is another way to market yourself or to use an open house as an opportunity to market yourself. You can hand that out, right? Okay, any other any other things, guys? I think we get that though, right? Mm -hmm. And so now play with it, okay? Play with that notion. Um, and of course, business cards. We were talking about that. It's important to have that, that connection with people just in case. Now, when it comes to feature sheets, um, do you bring yours? Do you bring the agents? What do you do with these feature sheets? You have to talk to your the agent. If you're doing an open house for an agent, um, Netta, were you doing your own open house or for an agent? No, so for an agent, what did you do with the feature sheets? I left out. So you didn't bring the feature sheets? No. And that's okay. And, and thank you for being honest because you know what, Netta? There's so many people that, that feel the way that you, and they don't voice it. So by you voicing it, for that. Um, so you know, I, I appreciate that. Right, so sometimes we're bad to ask the agent or we don't know, right? We let the other agent take the lead when the other agent's not able to take the lead. So when it comes to feature sheets, you have to talk to the other agent if it's not your own open house. Can you put it where it's the other agent and you or your own feature sheet? Have a conversation with them. This is an opportunity to sell yourself. Okay. And depending on the listing agent, they'll say, oh, yeah, do your own feature sheets, or yes, it's got to be combined, whatever. Okay, so everybody's a little bit different. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever is agreed. Okay, all right, let's keep going here. So now be informed. Uh, both Mo and Wendy, you guys were talking about this, right? So you're going to want to know the solds in the area. Wendy, you were talking about this, active listings and comparables. Uh, be familiar with the area and area amenities and schools. Actually, Wendy, you were talking about that. Mo, you were talking about the solds and the comparables, right? All details of listing, be prepared to sell the home. So let's go through that one at a time, okay? On your handout, guys, you will see that I've created, it's like a checklist. So you can always have this with you. You can just photocopy them. And for each home, just check, did I do this? I did this, I did this. Excellent, okay? And this, we're still talking all pre-open house. Yes, Mo. Sorry, question. No According to your previous slide, make sure to, before you go to an open house, house or asking an open house for another agent, please make sure to talk with him or her before you go there. Because I had two time problems with two of the famous okay. agents here in this office. Mm -hmm. And you know, don't, don't forget that you are doing a favor for them. They're not going to pay you. They're not their employee, not you're just their colleague. Mm -hmm. For example, they are spending time in a spa or whatever, I think don't care. But you <laughs> are going there, of course, you're going there, you spend your time, you want to get leave. But please make sure about everything because some of them, especially are like nine times in the business. Uh, okay, yeah. so this is still part then of, this is actually being informed. Yes. This is part so of. So make sure to take your time, mm -hmm. everything, all the feature sheet, I believe that your picture should be on it, everything, because you Well, that's how you it. personally would do it, right? Everybody yeah. is doing an open house for a different for me, reason. For me, if something happened, like, and I'm glad, I'm And I'm glad that you're voicing that, because yeah. there are gonna be people who are saying, listen, I wanna do an open house because I wanna make money. Yeah, mm -hmm. one time I went to Newmarket, Davis Hill, Davis Drive and Yine. It was a new subdivision over there. Mm -hmm. So because it was a new subdivision, when you put the address in Google Maps, it doesn't show, all right? So even the people, they don't know where is the house. Mm -hmm. After like 30 minutes, I found the house and I called like 10 times to the agent, she didn't reply. And then she replied like very aggressive. Why are you calling me, calling me back to back? I said, I'm sorry, I'm coming, I'm going to for your open house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the house, because it was new construction area, you were hosting the open yeah, house? Yeah, I was hosting. So I was hosting. So it was a construction area with all the like construction material around the house, and oh, it was wow. rainy and like it was horrible. And then 
after 30 minutes, I lock the door and it takes her, like, I'm so sorry, I'm leaving. It's not a house. It's not prepared for all the house. Wow. And then I report to Gregory. Okay, so what you're, that's part of being informed and doing your homework, too. Yeah, because to I didn't to know. know about that. I just was to me, what you're saying, hungry well, to get that open house. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I'm so glad you're mentioning that. That what you're talking about is get yeah. all the details of the list to be prepared to sell the home, right? Because you're absolutely right. Sometimes it does take work. And some agents post it because if they can sell it, great, but it's not ready for to sell. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You have to sell something that's half done. Yeah. That happened to me too. And it can happen. So you want to get, but like like Mo said, and I'm glad that you raised that point, is sometimes we're hungry. We don't know. We're just so excited. Okay, I got an open house. But this is where we kind of want to eliminate some of these things, right? You have to be prepared. You have to know the area. So how would you get to know the area before you go in? So being informed. How do you get all the details of the listing? You find it on MLS. You could find it on MLS. Yeah. So I'm I'm the listing agent. I'm saying free to go do me an open house for me this weekend. Where would you? What would you do? I could get some information from you. Mm -hmm. Probably if possible, if it's possible, I'll meet you before that. Okay. I go on MLS, I check the public record, see if the house has been on MLS before. Okay, so you want to get a little bit of details? Excellent, very good. Um, now to most point, what if the house, I'm saying, yeah, no, no, it's a good opportunity, because I just want you out there. I just want to show my seller, because I can't be, it's not that I want to, I don't, I can't be bothered, but I can't see value in spending my time when I've got to do listing appointments and other stuff, right? But my seller's bugging me to do this. So you as an agent would go and take a look at the property before, okay? Before, all right? Go and take, do an inspection of the property because don't rely. Now, Frida, you are bang on, my dear. Find out as much information and, and talk to the agent. Meeting with me is, is not a bad idea either. It's not necessary, um, but you want to find out as much information about the property so that when you're there, you're informed. And go take a look at the property before. Don't Inside wait till last minute. Or outside. Both. Yeah, schedule an inspection. And that's easy to do because me as a listing agent, I could say, okay, no problem. I'll talk to my seller and we'll get you in. Okay? Yes. I'm sorry, I have too much. No, I'm glad. I want, I want, I want lots. That I, I want that. From, yeah. I learned from Sandra No, before, you've learned so from I, your experience too, and I appreciate no. you giving me credit, but I, I, this is, this is what I you want, what I okay? That she uh, said to me before. Also, I have a suggestion, especially if you're going to open house. I never told you that house. once. <laughs> In summertime, you can go and uh, put your signs the night before. No, you missed it. Right. You missed that rules. part. There's new rules. You can't do but that. In, in some cities, it's okay. Yeah, so but I heard. No, um, for example, York region is starting to put re re restrictions. Hmm. Mo, to your point, that's a, a great idea. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, to your so point. On the same day, you can go like a little couple bit earlier. hours earlier. Yes. Because in summertime, if you go last minute, so you're going to be sweaty and like putting the. Well, this is what That's we were saying fine. about being dressed up as a woman in heels, trying to run. And so, too. Yeah. No, because you know what? Sometimes it's almost worse because if a guy's in a suit, suit. it's almost worse because, you know, like women are clothes, like sometimes we can get stuff that's a little more, you know, movable, right? Um, so what we were saying is, yes, to install them ahead of time, not overnight, to put the address and the time. And then you're, then you're within most of the rules. He might be pushing a couple of rules, but... Guys, get, get, let's get your job done. Yeah. And get certain signs that if someone decides to. No, it's. Yeah. I think that. <laughs> Persian style, Italian style. Anybody else want to add? I think it's pretty much. Most, <laughs> anybody most style. Most cultures that enjoy making money style. That's right. That's <laughs> I also um, like Google's like Viva, or like because of the bus situation. Yes, and like yes, Mental, yes. And people are like, how long is this going to be? So. They had like all the stuff, so I yes. printed that off to let the. And I think that's know. a great, that's a great idea. Just get to know the area, mm -hmm. because the last thing, I mean, that's the whole point of an open house, right? Is to be able to sell that property. But if you don't have the information about the home, about the area, about the sold, you you can't. Or if you don't know the house itself, you're just trying to figure it out last minute yourself. 
can't sell. You gotta be prepared, okay? This is very important. So solds, active listings and comparables, be familiar with the area and area amenities and schools and all details of the listing, be prepared to sell the home, okay? So that's, this is still all pre. Now, what do I need to bring? We're still pre open house, right? We haven't gotten to the open house yet, okay? We're still pre. So what am I gonna bring? I'm gonna bring obviously six to 10 signs. We've already talked about that. Now we're talking about the administrative work about things. We need sign-in sheets. Mo, I think you said you have to make sure you have enough registration, feature sheets, business cards, and refreshments. Any questions about that? What about refreshments? Now, when you did your open house, did you have any refreshments there? No, none, right? You just but walked in. If it was my open house, I absolutely would. What would you do? I Mo mentioned have, wine and cheese. Yeah, I would do like lemonade or iced tea in mm -hmm. the summer, coffee in the winter, or you know, like different depending on the weather and yeah, I would kind of gear it to that. And you know what? And I think and I always used to when I used to sell my own house, I would always make fresh chocolate chip cookies. cookies. We're going to talk about that at the and end of the, the class. Like uh, we're going to talk chip about chip that cookie. at the end of the class <laughs> because you know what? There's, it helps. It does. It does. I used to have a candle that was a chocolate chip cookie candle. I can't find them anymore. I should check Amazon. Oh, and I was going to say it was so. so good, and people would come into the house like, "Oh my god, your house smells so good." Yeah. yeah. There's a, apparently top scents that are good for helping to sell a home. Yes, chocolate um, chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, them. yeah. So baking, Cinnamon. anything baking is, is good. apple pie. Yeah, but the they problem, have apple pie candles. Yeah, the, the challenge is just to get the real McCoy though, eh? Like, <laughs> so some people will get, you know, the uh, Pillsbury dough. That's right. Yeah, and, and those kind of things, and they actually put it in the oven. That's right. An and they bake it so that you've got that fresh yeah. baking smell. I don't know why. Because then I eat them all, so I don't know yeah. if I'm going to do that anymore. Yeah, then you put them out. <laughs> you put them out for the clients, for the prospective yeah. buyers, or you leave it behind for your the homeowner. Yeah. Exactly. When it comes to refreshments, guys, um, you want to be mindful of a couple of things. You want to be mindful of cost, right? Because if you're a brand new agent or even a seasoned agent, some of this stuff, like I remember paying $60 for the Starbucks coffee thing and maybe having two or three people come through and then I've got all this coffee mm -hmm. and what am I going to do with it, right? And even with cakes and things like that, I used to always leave it for my for my seller, but you do that once, twice a week. Right. That's, it's, that's pricey. Mm -hmm. That's pricey. So you want to be mindful of the type of refreshments that you bring there. I have had some agents uh, do pizza and advertise pizza open house on their open house invitations just to get people come in. And uh, the poor soul didn't, didn't think to check because um, uh, it was a, a Jewish household. Oh my uh, Kosher. And uh, so he used one of their knives to cut. <gasps> exactly. <laughs> it was pepperoni, I guess. <laughs> pepperoni and cheese. Mm -hmm. And so she was so upset that she took the knife and buried it in the backyard because apparently that's what the Jewish do. I didn't know about this, but she was like, what is, what is, he was like, what's going on? What's going on? I just, she had to then cleanse and bring, I don't know, a rabbi in to cleanse anyway, because they had this food in there. Be mindful of your clients and who they are. And Mo, you, you mentioned bringing alcohol. Be mindful of who you're doing that with. What if your clients are alcohol? recovering alcoholic or something like that. You want to be very, very careful with. I'm not even blue. <laughs> I know. You can drink it. We'll come to your open house with the alcohol. Am I right, guys? Exactly. Let us know we'll be there. We'll be there. Just so that we make sure nobody is offended just in case. We'll drink it all, okay? So you'll be safe. But we do want to be mindful of the kind of refreshments. We used to actually have an agent. He used to do agent open houses and he would put on a lunch every mm -hmm. Thursday. And we called it, um, at that time, Marcello's Walking Bar. Mm -hmm. And all the agents used to go. It was a way for the agents to congregate mm -hmm. right. and get to know and view the house. So it actually was a really nice, the agents, he had, he had wine, he had, um, he had all kinds of sandwiches, pizza, mm -hmm. he had all kinds of food. And the agents would come to have a bite to eat, say hi, and then, uh, and then that's it. So it became like a, a social thing but they also got to know his home, which is a good, it's a good thing, okay? So there's lots of different ways to do that. The open houses are not just for the public, they're also for. The refreshments, if you buy those concentrated $1.99 iced tea, uh, it, the frozen ones, you take them out in the morning, you put it in a dollar store pitcher, 
have a couple different flavors and, and off you go you know what i saw too in um oh my gosh as i was looking for pot pies uh like ideas mm -hmm. yeah. right um what they did was they took a water bottle with the agent's label and they attach you know those those sticks that crystal light or the oh, um, that's a good idea that's right good idea. Yeah. i couldn't believe it it looked so adorable the crystal light they have iced tea mm -hmm. so now it was up to the person if they wanted to take that and turn it into like a different drink and you can have all kinds you can have the the sugar free you can have you know a little more healthier version whatever it is but you can do that you know what mo like you obviously it's clear you work out okay so mm -hmm. it's it's clear yeah it's obvious mm -hmm. so you could actually have so much fun around branding yourself all around health and working out so whatever you do, like let's say bottle of water, right? And then there's those healthier versions of um, the drinking packages that you could attach. And you say, here you go, have a you know have a nice drink on me. Exactly, but you could have you could have so much fun with that. You really should think about branding yourself a little bit more around like the health and because it's who you are. When we talk about branding, it has to be in alignment with who you are. When there's a perfect marriage between who you actually are and what you show on paper, it's it's idiot proof. Okay, I have to say it like that. People will remember, and it's easy for you to do as well. Okay, so have fun with what you do. Have fun with it. Okay, there's there's I, I don't even want to say the sky is the limit because I don't like that saying. At the end of the day, it's the mind that's the limit. Okay, so so think freely and think outside the box and have fun. We're in a great industry where we can we can explore and have fun and we can actually be who we we truly are. Some of us are serious, some of us are funny, some of us are, you know, um, nerds. Uh, there's all kinds, and there is a demographic for everyone. There's um, if, if anybody is wondering, there's also when we talk about you know like nerdy type approaches, um, there is a guy out in the states. Um, he calls himself real estate scientist or something like that uh the realty scientist and he's funny too like but you have to you have to have that that kind of mindset to really understand his jokes so on his oh i remember this was a while ago but on one of his pages he had um the baby's um change table and then one of those windows that was like an open casement window mm -hmm. so the window was open and like literally baby could roll out that's how it was like right wedged up right so he, he's looking at it, he goes, first of all, he calls it the S-H-I-T-I-C out there. And anytime you see something funny, he, he takes a photo and he posts it. So he saw this and he's looking at it and he's going, oh my goodness, smart idea or the next Darwin winner award or award, the Darwin award winner. Now, does anybody know the Darwin awards? No? Okay. It's a, it's a joke amongst like engineers and scientists and stuff like that. So Darwin is the scientist, right? Um, theory of evolution, survival of the fittest. <laughs> so there's apparently a book out there. And so the Darwin Award will go to someone who died in the most stupid way. <laughs> so there was, a, and when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, okay? But only, exactly, right? So he's speaking to a demographic that would understand that. You don't have to be... Be yourself, yeah. exactly. Okay, so I don't want to, I don't want to keep pushing that point. But when it comes to refreshments, there's a nice opportunity for you to brand yourself. So have fun with that. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Uh, pop up ideas, uh, pop by ideas, I should say, and uh, and brand yourself. You want to maybe lure people in with um, a little bit of uh, uh, you know a raffle. We were talking about the marketing. Have fun with it. Okay, even with your refreshments. Okay, I think the rest is pretty, pretty uh, straightforward, right? When it comes to all of this, any questions about what you need to bring? I actually have an open house box in my car, mm -hmm. like just one of those. I things. think that's a great idea. So that I have a candle in there. I have like please sign in, sign in there. Please take off your shoe sign in yes. there for like the for sale sign, like mm -hmm. things, so that I. I forgot something. It's so, a, you know what? That's an and all my sheets, excellent. even though I do yeah. sign in on iPad now, but I have sheets just in case you know something goes wrong. Excellent, and excellent. Or glasses. Yeah, you never know. I, I had a banker's box with all yeah, those, what, yeah. all those goodies in my trunk as well when I was selling full time. Ladies, you know how sometimes we're in pantyhose or in the summer maybe even bare feet. 
be mindful when you're doing an open house. Get yourself a nice pair of, of slippers. You know who actually has some nice um, shoes? They're summer shoes, but I like them for slippers is Arden. Um, and you can just, and they're like, yeah, you get like two for one. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was surprised. I was so surprised. They're like 15 bucks. Like they're so, they're so cheap, but really nice ones like mule type flat with like a little bit of a gold buckle on it and two for one. So you grab them, toss them in for, mm -hmm. for showings as well. Okay. But open house more particular, you know, because it's, it's uncomfortable to show up and some men at least have socks, right? right? You know, but women, when we're pantyhose or bare feet, bare feet is the worst. It's the worst. So be mindful of that, okay? And bring yourself a pair of open house slippers, okay? Even for the men, if they want to do that. There are all kinds of shoes out there. If you, want, if you don't want to be out in your socks, make sure you have, you know, a pair of um, open house kind of shoes or slippers. Okay, awesome. All right, anything else from here, guys? We're ready to move forward. All right, advertising your open house. We're still pre- this is the last point in the stuff that we need to do in, pre in preparation for our open house is advertising. So you want to tell prospective buyers. Now we talked already about open house invitations as part of some of the things that we were going to require, right? So who are you going to send these uh, open house invitations to? You can send them to prospective buyers. You can invite your leads and COI. So why would you want to do your leads and why would you want to do your center of influence or your database? Why do you want to send it to them? You think they're going to come out? Maybe. Maybe yeah. Would you like to show them how busy you actually are? What a great excuse. Exactly. What a great excuse to show your database and center of influence and your current clients exactly what you do. Okay. Because you don't know what they're thinking and you don't know if they're thinking about, Oh, look at this. This guy's on the ball, right? Okay, so you want to send it out to them. We talked about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, so social media will be constantly changing. There's Snapchat. Um, so be on top of. Twitter, I, I hear, is not as, as busy anymore as Facebook, it used to be. Instagram, and LinkedIn are the ones. The top, yeah, the top two is Facebook and Instagram. Those are the top two. I think it's better for... For business. Uh, the business. So here's everyone who has a business has and friends and exactly. has so it's gaining popularity. And this is it too. So what I'm gonna say to you guys is if you have accounts, put them on all of them. It's not gonna cause any harm. There are apps out there that all you have to do is populate it to one and it will populate to all of them. And you can schedule your posts. You don't have to, you know, do it in real time. Okay. Uh, post on MLS. What do I what do I mean about that? What do you mean post, post my open house on MLS? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, so you mentioned before mm -hmm. when you post on MLS, but also some days, especially in midweeks, it's for the other agent, right? So for in if you do that, you're gonna let them know that mm -hmm. I have an open I have a house for sale. So mm -hmm. it is also good. So if you go to MLS, there is a part for open house. Exactly. You can go there and check it out. So exactly. it is especially like Tuesday, Wednesday, between 11 to 1 mostly. And it is especially agent open house. Exactly. Okay. exactly. So let the agents know. So no one they else instead of both. agent can. Oh, they okay. can go, but both. it is mentioned that agent open house. Also, oh, there is a sign that you okay. can put in front of the house yes. that says agent open house today, 11 to 1. That's right. Okay. So you can do both. You can do agent open house. You can also do um, open house to the public and you can post it on MLS. The open houses will get populated onto like realtor.ca and MLS.ca that the public has access to. And there's a way for them to do a search where they can search all of the open houses. So those buyers that are a little more prudent and they're really online, because buyers are online for at least several weeks before they actually per to start purchasing or the purchasing process. So they will search for these open houses and they will come through, okay? So it's always a good idea to put it on the MLS. All right, excellent guys. Uh, phone canvas and door knock area. Mo, you talked about that. So call the eight, call the people. You're gonna get nosy neighbors, good. Contact. Who cares if they're nosy? If you connect, it's all about connecting with people. That's all this is. It's a numbers game. The more people you talk to, the more people you get face to face with, and the more you convert, that's how you succeed. 
okay? So go ahead and tell people, talk, door knock, phone call, whatever it is, invite them to come by. All right, you'll do, you'll do a couple of things there. Number one, you'll show them how busy you are. Number two, if they are thinking about making a move, they'll pop by. And number three, if they're nosy, so what? You've got a contact that then may refer you. Okay, so you just don't know. So go for it, okay? And open house flyers mailed out. Why do we want to do that? Where are we going to flyer this? Where are we going to send this open house there. flyer? Mm -hmm. Around the property. Yeah, in that community. So in that community, okay. Where else could we do it? Any geographic farmers here? Send it to your geographic farm. So let's say your open house is in Newmarket, but you're farming here in Richmond Hill. Yeah, Okay, because you always want to saturate your geographic farm with everything you do, whether it's in your area or not. Saturate it. And also around that area that you are living. That you're living as well? Yes. What do you mean? What area? For example, you live in Richmond Hill. Uh huh. You have an open house in Newmarket, mm -hmm. and your office is like in Scarborough. Yeah. So I believe if you send the flyers around your office, around your the place that you are living at. Course, you can, listen, area. you can flyer anywhere provided that your pocketbooks allow you to, mm -hmm. right? But if you are on a tight budget, the only place that you should be uh, flyering is your geographic farm. Right. That's your first priority. Why? That's where you want to be known. Right. It's, it's what I call guerrilla marketing, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to infiltrate an area, I'm not going to... I'm not going to scatter my resources. I'm going to filter. I'm going to filter my, my, my resources into one area. Then providing that my pocketbook is okay, then I'm going to send it to the area around. I'm going to send it to where I live. I'm going to send it to wherever. Okay? But you want to remain focused if, if, you're, if you're, the pocketbook is a little bit on the tight side, which for realtors it always is. <laughs> All right, excellent. Any questions about advertising your open house? No? Any other ways that you can advertise it that, that maybe we didn't think of here? Um, I think, you know, all of the vintages in the house, for example, if the house for $4 million, right. you do whatever you think about it. So you're absolutely at that point, right. you do all your, of the above. Your, your <laughs> mind is going to be like creative something that it was never before in the market. I agree. You no, know, it depends. I agree. I totally agree with you. So what Mo is saying is that think outside the box. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're going to do the basics, but if your mind tells you to do something else, like if you're noticing, oh my goodness, like this home, I could market it in that demographic, then do it. Go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good job, guys. Okay. During your open house. What are we going to do during the open house? What time are you going to arrive? So there's arrival greeting, what to say. We're going to talk about the greeting. We're going to talk about what to say. So now, prior to your open house, we are going to make the assumption that you went to take a look at the property, you have place to call, because remember, we've got to know about everything about the property. You've spoken to the seller, but the seller is expecting you because sometimes there's even that. I personally always enjoyed calling the seller. Say, hi, my name is Sandra Prada. I'm going to be doing an open house on behalf of um, um, Wendy, and I just wanted to introduce myself, see if you had any questions about prepping for the open house. Because then when I show up, they're not like, who are you? Okay, this is about making this a, a wow type service, right? <laughs> so we've done all of that. What time am I going to arrive? Right on time? One hour. What? Oh, geez. Well, what are you going to do? No, I'm going to go home. No, one hour before an open house. Uh, you know what? Let me explain. Uh, for example, it depends. It's a two-story house uh -huh. with a basement. So I always try to be there one hour. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do in that period of time? I'm going to go and inspect the house. Mm -hmm. Every single room, every single bedroom all the basement, everything. Mm -hmm. So I prepare myself, even in backyard. So something maybe I see in the house that I, for example, I was in an open house. It was a new house. Mm -hmm. So the basement was too far, but without any drywall. So I thought that if they're, like they put a swiping door here, it mm -hmm. can def easy separate for a bedroom. So these are the things that whenever who came to that open house, mm -hmm. I told them, it's spending like 200 bucks, you mm -hmm. can put a swiping door and you can have another room in your basement. And 
all of them are, oh, wow, nice. Mm -hmm. You know, these things that I think maybe one hour, not exactly one hour, but mm -hmm. before that, like 30 minutes at least. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? That's a great idea. Yeah. Now, we were talking about doing the inspection before, but what you're talking about is making sure the home is showable. And maybe even while the sellers are there, maybe moving some things around to make it a little more appeasing for an open house and then making even suggestions, right? So very good. So um, Mo was saying an hour before. What other times, if you're not, if you're not gonna be doing business like Mo, maybe not everybody wants to do it that way, what is also appropriate? Half an hour before. See, so just before the open house on a Saturday, the sellers could be scrambling and trying to get their kids out of the house and, you know, freaking out. It, depending on the situation, yes. depending on the situation, arriving an hour earlier might be a little bit too stressful for them. I'm not saying that that's a negative thing or a bad thing. We have to be very that was mindful. Like and that's a different story, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be mindful of what's happening with the seller. So on average, 30%, uh, 30%. 30 minutes before is fine. Mo's given a great idea that to show up even an hour before. You relax, you put the signs out, you're relaxed, you, you take a look at the home, fix things up if need be, right? And there's there's nothing wrong with that. So always be open-minded about how you wanna handle it. I recommend 30 minutes is a pretty nice average. Okay, pretty nice average. All right, excellent. Now, what are we gonna say? If this point comes in, what are we gonna say? We talked about that at the beginning, right? So, Mo, well, you've done some open houses? Yes. Okay. So when someone, when I, if I were to arrive, I knock on the door, what happens? Or do I just walk in? I'm going to the door okay. and say they'll come to the open house and then call. Uh, and then uh, you want to meet, or I start to explain the house to them. And then maybe they are with the kids, or oh, and then I start to create new videos and meet you. Mm -hmm. yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you do show them up. and then take a tour of the house for them. Okay. And I so, think one of the most difficult of the house is the house that they are making. So it is. I've, nice. done, I've done some of those. That's hard for people to imagine. It's so hard. that's why. And it's hard I, to I, sit I, in I, those. I told them everything. Yeah. You just imagine how cheer. Yeah. The TV is there. And they, they, they were following my hands, you know? Yeah, they thinking like, I'm a magician. Yeah. So, <laughs> there, that well, there. guys, if you're doing an open house and the home is, um, is vacant, there's what they call augmented reality. So there are apps out there where you can actually place furniture and have like, um, you know, you take the clients for a tour with your iPad and say, this is what the, the, you know, the room looks like, but here's what it would look like with furniture. So it's, it's called augmented Great. reality, okay? Do you or know what a, the app is now? Uh, there's different ones and different programs. I do know that our marketing department, um, the people that do our our, um, our tours, they, mm -hmm. they have access to that because it's really, it's Snap, okay. is also, the company. John fancy, Amendola does it. So fancy if you want. There is a magazine in, in front of our front desk. Yeah. There is a girl on the front page. So some comes to the door. Do you have the door locked? Do you have the door open, like unlocked? How do you have that door? Some people lock for safety and they want you to ring the doorbell so you can greet them. But right. I personally, I, I would leave the door open. And that's a Or put a little sign saying, come on in, you know, right. welcome. So to put the open a house. sign, exactly. Put a sign on the door greeting them, okay? Welcome, come on in. Welcome, please ring doorbell. I'll be with you shortly or something like that. Like, put, put a sign. I have that sign from, tra like, that you, welcome, please come in, make yourself feel at home. Like, exactly. it says something like Because that. right from that get-go, I remember when we first do, when we first started doing open houses, there was no real training, right? And so we wanted those sign-in sheets um, signed. So we would say, uh, one, one, one agent would have, uh, if you don't have photo ID, uh, you, you cannot view the home. Right on the front door. No. 
Well, that's not a nice, that's not welcoming. it's not welcoming, right? You want people to feel like they're at home. It's like you're greeting them to come into your home. You want them to feel at home, right? Because otherwise, how are you going to sell the home if you can't elicit those emotions, right? It's very hard to be realistic. It's, buying and selling a home is emotional. So you want to elicit those emotions, right? So do whatever you can to make someone feel warm and welcome. So if it's up to you. If you want to have the door closed, locked, I should say, or unlocked, you as an agent should be sitting in a spot where you can clearly see who's coming and going, okay? That's for safety. All right. Yes, Mo. Uh, I have another suggestion. Mm -hmm. I also play music. Yes. Very loud music. Yes. It's, it's a kind of icebreaker. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't put techno that way. Oh, no. No, no rap. <laughs> just chunky. Just like it. It depends, you know? <laughs> you know what you're. <laughs> There's a man that says, um, the agent was saying, like, like, we would call that her son or daughter's ace or that started kind of like, she's like, try to get it, like, too far. It could happen. Yeah. Like, any of that can happen, right? But you know what? You want to set, you want to set that, that ambiance, whichever way that you feel is, is a good, is a good idea, right? So, um, the greeting, you want to do that as well, okay? Um, now, here. Sonia, darling, yes. Can you put yourself on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I thought I was on mute. <laughs> oh my you god! Everything that's going on. Oh my god! It says mute. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Actually, I'm okay. To, I'm okay with that as long as you're okay. Well, you know what I'm going to do, Sonia? Well, I better not fart. Open this, so I can hear you as opposed to making it sound like you're creepy in the closet. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Don't be silly. Actually, you can participate. I like it better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not if I'm making background noise. No, oh my God. That's okay. No worries. The whole time, the whole time I've been thinking, time. doesn't that other participant know that they're not on mute? No, which is okay. <laughs> um, it actually, you know how I knew it was you, Sonia? Is your name shows up on the screen. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Noise and it's coming from your end. Okay, I'm going to mute unless I have anything important to say. I, you know what? No problem. Whatever makes you comfortable, hun. No, no. I don't and I don't want you guys hearing all this crap behind us. Well, I'm glad I got to talk to you, so I'm happy. Oh my gosh. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi, Sonia. <laughs> okay, I, I did want to interactive to be honest. You know what? I did do an open house for someone mm -hmm. and everything that you guys are talking about, I'm I'm thinking to myself, yes and yes and oh yes. So yeah. thank you. Thank you everybody for sharing. I'm going on mute now. Bye. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, feel free to jump in anytime, Sonia. Okay, so now what to say. So you're, you're going to want to start with the sign at the front and all of that stuff, right? And then you mentioned sometimes kids and, oh, your little girl's so cute. Sometimes we want to bring, like, something to make sure that the kids will be, um, you know, preoccupied. Maybe an iPad with some games on there. There's different things, right? Some, most parents come equipped anyways these days. But you might want to have something, coloring books or something, to make a joke with the kids. Here, help me write an offer. You know, like have some stuff there for them to color. Yeah, I was at an open house and they had a basketball court, and I thought, it, like, I it wasn't my open house, and I thought it would have been so good what handing the little idea. kids a basketball and say, okay, go play in the basketball court. Can you know? imagine? And yeah, because they were like oh, basketball court. That but, would make that would yeah. make a big difference. Uh, I also want to share something, mm -hmm. maybe gonna be helpful. Uh, I take I took my clients to, to, to the open house. Mm -hmm. He was one of our colleagues from his office. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. please take care that take care right don't say anything personal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because she was a single mom and her son was with her and she hates her ex husband, right? And also the kid doesn't know their the existing father or something yeah. like that. And she was like three years old, four years old. And then the other age, oh, you look, you look like that. And, and then she mentioned me, let's go. Like after oh, two months. Right. So be careful, don't think anything personal or even you're touch right. the kids. Maybe they you're don't like. No, you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. And I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you said that because you're absolutely right. And unfortunately that agent was one of the experienced agent, you know? And then when we came to the car, my client said she touched too much. Oh, that's right? not good. Why would they do and something like that? That's ridiculous. So, 
house. I, you never I swear that they really like that house. Maybe they wanted to put an offer on it. Mm -hmm. But then she said that your son is like his father. Mm -hmm. and, oh my God. How did you, did Done. you see his father? Yeah. What did you say like Done. that? Yeah. Done. So you know, when it comes to homes in general, guys, this is just a little bit of an aside. Um, you want to be mindful, even if there's nobody in the home, you want to be mindful of what you say. Because everything with the technology is such that, um, that people, there's videos and cameras, they could be recording you. So be really super careful with, with what you say and what you do, okay? Because you could be giving away, you know, stuff for your um, negotiations, right? I've heard where people have used that in negotiations where they play back and forth what, uh, what was said. Okay, so be mindful. Everything is being recorded. Exactly. Behave as if it is being recorded. So let's go back to the greeting. Okay, I want to see what's over here. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to go. I'm going to keep going. The greeting and what to say. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. Now you have arrived. When you when uh, when should you be at the property and set up? What should you do once you arrive? So we already talked about the property. What time to arrive? Um, what about setup? Yes. Make sure to turn on all of the lights. Yes, all of the lights, exactly. What else? Personal stuff should be put away. Make sure your seller, maybe, you know, because we have jewelry out or, or whatever, make sure all personal items are out of the way, okay? Everything is out of the way. Anything else? Make sure it doesn't smell. Oh. Animals. Feel, yeah. Make sure pets are, you know, I remember one of my first open houses, I did it with a Great Dane. Mm. This thing was a horse. I am not even exaggerating. Oh yeah. I think that happened to me this week. Oh, <laughs> similar. <laughs> Do you want to share, Mo? Would you like to share what happened to you in Keswick? Would you like to share, Mo, what happened? Some of us know. Some of us have been privy to the yeah. video. What happened, Mo? Do you have the video? I have, but you know, <laughs> my, my phone is going to be there. What a shame. Why don't you share with everybody what happened? <laughs> it was it was nothing actually, mm -hmm. but we arrived late for showing the house to our client. And then we called to the owner or uh, the seller that sorry we are a little bit late. And then she said, You can come, no, don't worry, but I have two dogs. I'm going to take care of them and then you can come. I said, okay. <laughs> so I'm okay with dogs, right? <laughs> so, but not the monsters, right? <laughs> so we knocked on the okay door, knocked on the door. All of a sudden, a dog came, it was like two times bigger than me. That's, that's huge. <laughs> now we're talking And huge. then I was freaked out and then I jumped in the car. So my pants was a little bit tight. So it dripped all uh, the way from no. the back side. It ripped. From my belt here in the back, all right the way out, to the front. Right in there. And that's then, hilarious. It was, it was, it was very funny. What was even more hilarious is when he went to go change. Yeah. He found a plaza that was nice and quiet. And, and always okay. be sure to take one of your trusted of friend with yourself <laughs> to, to open up to showing the property because while he was, was changing his, uh, his, par his partner videotaped it <laughs> oh and marco makes the story much he more does fun. he makes it funny <laughs> we went, yeah we went after showing finish we went to a parking lot somewhere in keswick it was like quiet parking lot behind one seat that city or something so i always have some clothes in my trunk so I, I went out and I removed my pants and changed it with my shorts and stuff. And then all of a sudden, and that and, my, and Marco, Marco was to start. He's video taping it. Said, he should do that on, video in Marco. Come on, Marco. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. But that's and what then I all said. of a sudden, and all of a sudden like five, Mark six Clark. cars arrived there. The cars, they, all of them, they came from off road. Like, Huge white guys, all of them with tattoo and everything. I was, and I was, I was shocked. Oh my god! I was half naked in that. And Marco, and Marco videoing it. No, only me was naked. Oh, yeah. He was okay. making a video, and then I thought, "Hey, like, we are talking exactly. together." Exactly, that's what I meant. You know, and they're laughing. Oh. <laughs> He's like, Marco, oh my God, they're like, they're oh, I'm telling you. Because all of a sudden, that looks like a couple having some fun. In the back of the SMEO, exactly. Yeah, maybe they thought that I'm doing a trick. 
Because Marco was just like, hey, hey, like this. Oh my God. So but you're funny. absolutely right. I think it should be the life of realtor. Right? Yeah. Right? yeah. The life of a realtor. This is the that stuff that happens so to us. Yeah. Exactly. It was, it was great I've been saying that. You know, this is exactly part of our job. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I love this but job. But it can happen. Yeah, I, I love this job. I really I love this business. Because, for example, before showing the event there, it was summertime. And then we, we, we had a beer together. You know, yeah. it was so oh good. <laughs> of course. But I, you know, I think like, he has to post all the videos that like Marco the, takes. Yes. Yeah, like the funny <laughs> blooper videos. Oh, there, but there are, there are a ton. And those two, you two together do make funny stuff. Like you guys should be posting yeah, it. I've the, said it, it's been months. It's been months. That video to <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. know when she looked at me, so maybe she laughed, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So to add to what do you bring? Sorry, no, to <laughs> advertising. What do I need to bring? Extra clothes and shoes, yes. just in case. <laughs> but you know what? Though all kidding aside, I always used to have, and I still do. It's kind of like if someone looks in my trunk, they're like, "What is in here?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Well, I've got an extra change of clothes. I have an extra pair of shoes. I always have something extra. You just don't know. You just don't know." Okay, so set up. What should I do once you arrive? So of course the signs are out. You put a sign out front or you put the rider sign. What do you do now? Put the signs out, right? You, you arrange your, your feature sheets. You, you organize yourself, right? Yes. Uh, so if the house is, uh, the driveway is for parking one car. Yes. Uh, make sure to park your car somewhere else. Exactly, make, thank you for uh, that. Yeah, you're absolutely you right. Come. You wanna make the home as inviting as possible. Okay, so you wanna bring some refreshments, you wanna put some, uh, uh, you put a scented candle in the kitchen, whatever it is, okay? Baked goods, whatever. You bring your marketing material, whatever that marketing material is and set yourself up nice and relaxed, okay? Because half an hour will give you lots of time to greet the, um, Read the sellers and get yourself organized okay so that you're ready because some of us do it last minute then we're not prepared and how do we come across Scattered. with the person yes right you want to be relaxed and you want to be ready to greet your guests because basically that's what you're doing here okay good job guys i love i love the discussion today too now greeting what are you going to do now we'll talk about this last because i do have a script if you turn to the second page uh, there's only actually two pages of this handout, but you'll see that there is a script with some tips at the bottom. We're going to talk about the script in a moment, okay? How do you get them to fill out the sign-in sheet, okay? The script, the script will tell you a little bit of that. So how do you get them to sign in? Now, we talked about that. Some people put a thing on the door saying, if you don't have ID, or you can't come in. It's a nice way to start your open house. Or you, as people walk in, you can say, hi, for security purposes, the vendor, the seller has asked us to, um, to get all the names and numbers of the people coming here, right? And uh, anybody do that? Yeah. And how many did you get? How many people signed? A lot of them. And of them. How, were they, was it accurate information? Um, no. Yes. There was about two that weren't. Okay. I've had a lot of that. Like I've gotten, you know, double trouble at hotmail.com. I've gotten all kinds. <laughs> Bart Simpson at Gmail. I've got all kinds. Okay, it's the truth. And you know what? The funny thing is, I haven't built rapport with with that person that's just walked in yet. So they're already. Well, oh, it's it's a real term. I don't mm -hmm. want to talk to her or him, right? And now I'm going to call. It, I need you to sign before you go anywhere. Is that a nice, warm, welcoming feeling? And it's not a warm, welcoming feeling. So. Now I'm, I'm giving a suggestion. I took a course on how to do an open house, right? So I'm giving a suggestion. I know that this works. I just had one of my agents and she said it was totally fine for me to use her name and her experience. Marilyn Nuno out in Vaughn. So she's been doing with me, I've been coaching with her and she's been doing um, a, a geographic farm. So I helped her with the geographic farm and she's working diligently and she was doing an open house and I gave her the checklist of the system to run a proper open house. She used this system. In her geographic farm, on Monday she signed a deal 1.6 million, okay? So it does work, There, it, it, it does work. 
One thing I want to say is you always have to do what is in alignment with who you are. So if you feel that you can get away with doing it a little bit differently, no problem. I don't want to take away from if you're already holding and hosting, um, you know, successful open houses. But if you're having a challenge, and even if you are having successful open houses, let's open up our minds and do things a little bit differently, okay? Because I'm of that old school sign in or you can't walk through the house, okay? But that doesn't elicit those emotions, right? So what we're going to be doing is you put that sign on the door. They either walk in or ring the doorbell. The first thing you're going to do is, hi, how are you today? So Wendy, I'm gonna role play with you. Hi, okay. how are you today? So nice to see you. My name is Sandra. Yeah. Um, normally agents will have you sign in and I'm not one of those agents. I just want you to enjoy your experience here. So here's a feature sheet, okay? Yeah. We'll pretend you took that. In the kitchen, I've got coffee brewing. I've got some goodies out there. Please take some and enjoy, um, you know, and, and enjoy your tour here. And I gotta tell you, the bathroom upstairs in the master, it, they just did an exquisite job. That's like my favorite. I, I wanna sit in that room all day. It's like my favorite room in the house. I really wanna get your, your thoughts on what you think about that okay, bathroom, great. okay? So enjoy your tour. If you need anything, I'm here and I'm happy to be of service, okay? Yeah. And let the person go. Let them walk through the house. Because if we're following them, they don't know us, right? They're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I've yeah. done that, okay? I've been in that shoes and it's not a nice feeling. And you try to make it, oh, ha, ha, you know? But really, all they wanna do is maybe take two minutes, take a look at the home and be on their way to go do groceries or whatever it is, take the kids to dancing, whatever it is that they gotta do, right? Because usually on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon, this is what people are doing, right? So when they come back down, oh my God, Wendy, what did you think of that? I thought it was beautiful. Isn't it? It's like my favorite. Did you see how the tub was done and they got that? <sighs> You know that spring um, shower head or whatever the heck it's called, that. right? I know. I was like that tub. I could soak in it forever. It's really nice, eh? Mm -hmm. Now I've got to ask you, what are your thoughts about the home? Well, I think it's beautifully laid, laid out, mm -hmm. but it's a little too big right now. So. Excellent. Now, when I say excellent, I don't mean that. I would turn around and say to her, "I get that." So now, what Wendy just said now has indicated she's a, a more serious buyer. Why? That wasn't even scripted, so thank you. Why? Because I'm giving you a negative, like I'm giving you a... Because, exactly, so there's, you're actually being pensive about what it is that that you're house is. For, yeah. Right, and you said it was a little bit too big? Too big. A little bit too big. Mm -hmm. So she's not looking for a home that big. So I would then say to her, well, you know what, I can understand. What size home are you looking for? 2,500 square 2, feet instead of 3,000 Excellent. Square feet. And in this area? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what? I got to tell you, I got a couple of people that are thinking about listing. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I'd love to give you first dibs at it. Mm -hmm. All right. What's that would your, be great. Let me take your email so I can give you a, a, an email. What's your email? Debbie Robosky. Perfect. And what's your cell number? Because I want to call yes. you to make sure. Okay. That's perfect. Awesome. Now I potentially have correct information or do you have a business card because now everybody's mm -hmm. got a business card right yeah so you want but to the other thing thoughts. is always make sure if they're working with an agent because like this just happened to me someone was going to come to an open house i said are you working with somebody and they go no and i said oh great right. i thought it was a lead i'm like all right yeah. this is amazing and then i am a realtor yeah so make sure you say realtor at the end are you working with a realtor and you can, you can ask that question. Mm -hmm. um, some people feel comfortable doing it, some people don't. They, some people feel more comfortable getting to know or having the people have that opportunity to get to know you. Me personally, I always wanted people to have the opportunity to get to know me without me interrogating them. I always wanted but to can't do that. you just say it like in a nice way? I just say, oh, are you currently working with a realtor right you now? Could. You could, that's why I'm saying you gotta Like do. if they leave a blank or whatever. Totally up to you, mm -hmm. okay, totally up to you. There's different ways that they're all correct. Right. You know, okay. so I'm giving, I'm giving different perspectives. Okay. Me personally, I never did. I always, I, I was not interested, I was interested in that person. Right. I was interested in getting them information, that's mm -hmm. it. And there is a small part of me 
that was like, I almost don't care if they're working with another agent, but they're going to want to work with me. Right. Okay. There is that small part. Okay. Having said that though, if I happen to know that they are absolutely working, because they might say yes, my just brother. to stonewall me. Yeah, they do. Right. Yeah. They might just say yes to stonewall me. I have no idea if what they're saying to me is true or not. And so that's why I never asked them in the beginning. So once I started to build a rapport and I understood, then I my, my next set of qualifying type questions, then I would start finding out if it's legit or not. Mm -hmm. But I've given them that opportunity to get to know me, okay? Because otherwise they stonewall me, yep, and I'm yep, done. They don't want to deal with, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, most people that are legit with another agent, they will say, you know what, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm working with, um, you know, Mo Taslimi over at Royal Page, and I just want to take, take a look. No problem, no problem. Go ahead. If you have Mo's um, a, a number, I'll, I'll give him a shout uh, to follow up through him. Okay, that's totally fine too. Most people will do that if they are legit working with someone. Okay, but I like to I like to massage it a little right. bit and figure out are they stonewalling me or do they legitimately have something? True. Okay, so I take that opportunity to build rapport and get them to like me and get to know them and figure out what it is that they need. So my focus is on them and providing a service to them. Afterwards, I have opportunity to do that. But there is no right or wrong. I'm just sharing how I did it, okay? And everybody has to kind of pick and choose the things that they like and don't like about what I'm saying, okay? Mm -hmm. So at the end, I've got now contact information, okay? Because I've had the opportunity to build some rapport. Whereas if Wendy just came in and I kamikaze her right from the get-go, she's more unlikely to give me the real accurate information because I'm like, oh God, it's another agent, it's another agent, right? This way around, she's got to know me, oh, I don't mind, this lady's kind of nice, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't mind giving her my number, okay? The other way around, I kamikaze her at the front door and then at the end, We've built a nice rapport and then, oh, you signed in? Okay, I'll get, I'll get that information. She may be embarrassed to say, oh, I gave the wrong info, right? Right. You don't want to put them in that bad position either. That's a good point. Right? And it's happened too. And it's like, oh, I gave you my Make. email that I'm rarely on, but here's my business card. Okay, don't, but I don't want to put them in that bad position. At the end, that's then when I, I start working on selling. Okay, any questions about that, guys? There is a sample script. Um, if anybody wants to go through it, I'm happy with that. But if you figure you get the gist of it, then we're going to continue. Everybody comfortable with that script? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So that's, ladies and gentlemen, how you get them to sign your sign-in sheet. All right. Now, what to say? We talked about the script. We already spoke about that. Be knowledgeable about the home and the area because obviously when you're knowledgeable and you feel comfortable with what you're selling, that builds credibility, right? Can you imagine if uh, they say, well, oh, this is a really nice area. What schools are in the area? And you go, um, I, I don't know. I know, that happened to me too. Right? How yeah, annoying is that? How annoying is that? Oh, there's two schools, but with, I don't know the names, but yeah, if you have the ranking, if you know all the information, then it's- And that's exactly you know what Frida better. was saying. Mm -hmm. Frida was saying, I'm going to check out that information, every information possible online, right? The nice thing about the online stuff is you guys can do all kinds of PI work and you can figure out things right immediately online. You don't have to go driving around like back in the day, like I did in the olden days. I sound like, you know, like my parents, I had no, I had one pair of shoes. <laughs> I used to use a donkey to go to school. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, those, that's why I feel like that. Back in the day, I used to have to drive around. <laughs> you guys can just go online and check it out. You do Google and you just spin around the area on the mm -hmm. street view and you're an expert in no time, okay? So do that research before you do the open house. Know everything about it, okay? Awesome, good job. Anything else about what to say? Everybody feel a little more comfortable or confident? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All right, post open house. So now we're talking about afterwards. So you can see your checklist will take you pre, during, and post. Now this is after, okay? So 
as you leave, you want to make sure you pick up all your documents and items, right? So whatever you've brought, you want to make sure you take all of that, right? Any follow-up, you got to make sure that you have your sign-in sheets, you have proper notes. You may want to take a couple minutes while it's fresh in your head. Oh, Wendy, yeah, she was looking for blah, blah, blah. Because you know what? You might you might forget when, oh, I'll, I'll deal with that later. I'll, you and know. then you forget. And then you forget. Make sure you do detailed notes, as detailed as possible. Take a couple of minutes while you're there, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, and the administration side of things. So administration. So if, if you did an open house for someone, okay? So let's say you guys did an open house for me. I'm going to need a report. So what do you do? You're just going to call me up and say, hey, Sandra, okay, went well. I have about four people come through and blah, blah, blah. Not really the right way to do a report with the agent that has asked you to do the open house. You want to be as detailed as possible. Now you want to be detailed too because what if Wendy comes back and does an offer with the listing agent and then I'm I'm out. But if I have a detailed report that of what I did and what I said, okay, and how I helped procure an offer, now I've got and I've sent it off to the agent. And now it takes care. So you're doing a couple of things. Number one, you're protecting the work you've done, and number two, you're being respectful and courteous of the agent who now has to report back to their seller, okay? Now, if that is if you're working for with another agent, but if this is your own listing, now you have a detailed report that you can give your client, okay? You may not wanna share personal information about Wendy, but you can say young couple, Wendy, uh, two young kids, looking to move in this, you can give that information to your client, right? So administration is very, very important. Make sure your notes are detailed and make sure you place that. So if you're the listing agent, take those, they take those notes and put it in your listing uh, folder. Why would I want to do that? You want to create always, right? Some paper trail of everything you did because at, at, towards the end of the listing or maybe you're, your client decides to have a bad day, Mercury is in retrograde or something like that, and they start saying, oh, I can't, I got to, I got to, um, I have to, I have to cancel with you. Well, you can sit down and have an educated conversation with them, and you have notes on everything that you've done on that property, whether they be electronic or paper trail, it's irrelevant. Just make sure you have notes that you can review with your seller, okay? One minute, let me tell you, our sellers and buyers love us, and then the next minute, someone woos them. And that's it. We were all of a sudden terrible. All of a sudden we're terrible. We've done such a terrible job. Okay. This happened actually to uh, another one of our agents. Um, I've been assisting him with um, closing. He had a listing on Puccini and uh, the agent is, is David. And constantly was talking to me about how do I do this and what of this happened that happened. His seller was so difficult, so difficult. And he worked so hard to get the deal done. Now comes time to purchase. So now he starts to help this person. Okay, so now he's sitting there, he's working way to, to help her um, on the buying end. And she starts now um, having real estate affairs all over the place, right? Hiring different agents, showings, and so on. And he says, listen, if you feel more comfortable working with someone else, don't worry. I don't, you know, I don't have to buy, I don't have, we don't have to do the VRA. You can go work with whoever you want to work with. And she says, no, I want to work with you. And so she signs a BRA with him, and, and it's, it's for an extended period of time. Then she goes and purchases with someone else. So now that our agent is saying, well, wait one second. You know what? I don't appreciate that you did that. So now he starts filing to get his commission. What does she do? She retaliates. All of a sudden, he's a horrible agent. From being an amazing agent that saved her, and, and her family and he worked so hard and was so dedicated. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden she's firing back how unethical he was. And she's even filed a complaint at RICO. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what? It's just a huge nuisance. So from being a star, and why? Because she owes commission. She was wrong. He's not, she is. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying to you guys, take have always a good paper trail of everything that you do, okay? All right, so let's keep going. That's the administration part. Documents and items, as you're leaving, make sure that you collect the completed sign-in sheets. Check that you have ample feature sheets for, that are left for the remainder of the week. 
because depending on how many people that you had come through, you don't want to deplete the listing agent of their feature sheets and or if it's your own listing, you don't want to deplete your own listing, your own uh, listing of feature sheets. You want to make sure you have plenty for the week. If you don't have plenty, let the agent know that you know what they're low on feature sheets. And if you are low on it, make sure you get your feature sheets in order for the next day. Okay, so make sure you have ample. And of course, remove the rubber rider. Put your, put, make sure you have the right shoes on. I've had guys that walked off with the wrong shoes. <laughs> so you wanna just make sure, right? Because usually at the end of a, a, an open house, we're usually pretty bored, let's be realistic. Is it fun to sit at an open house? It's usually pretty boring, right? So we're usually ready to get the heck out of there and that's when everybody shows up, right? But really be mindful of what you're doing and remember this is business. The other thing too is I can pretty much bank that your seller or whoever it is, the seller, if it's not your seller, it's the other agent seller, are watching you or have neighbors watching you. Yeah, yeah they're across the street and they're watching you from their, their living room window, watching everything that you do. And, and they, they send do. people in. They do. It's gross. They send, they shop Five. you. What do they call that? They shop you? You know when they, they send in a, sh a shopper? <laughs> yeah. It's like a family member yeah. or a neighbor. Yeah. You know, so people, people will do that. And I get it. I'm sure we would do the same thing maybe in their shoes if we were feeling a little desperate or unsure about mm -hmm. what's going on, right? Yeah. So make sure you're, you're always, you know, don't be yelling like there's somebody on the phone as you're leaving, <laughs> right? That yeah. kind of stuff. Be mindful. You never know who's listening. Okay. Follow up. Follow up with your seller and give them uh, an update as to how the open house went. When do you want to do that? Right away. Right away. You can follow up with the paperwork. Just say, hey, listen, I'm leaving your home now. I've locked everything. There were some refreshments that, that, I, that, um, that I, I left for you guys. You know, enjoy that kind of thing, right? Uh, follow up with the potential clients. Be interested versus interesting. So remember, Wendy came through my, my, my open house, right? When do I call Wendy? The very next day? Oh, hi, Wendy. It's Sandra. Just wanted you to, um, you know, to see if you liked the open house. Some people say yes, but I let's personally be, don't like that. Right? Let's let's be realistic. Who would? Yeah, I don't like that. But like some people, yeah, you go to home and talk right away. Exactly. But I don't like that. I don't. No, like I don't like it. Pushy. I don't like it either. And I don't like uh, also that I'm calling with no real reason. I'm just calling to say hi. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I just wanted to get your comments on the open. Well, that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah. So this is why I say be interested versus interesting. And you maybe want to give it a little bit of a day or two days. I always follow the rule of three. So three days, you know, three times I would contact someone or take them out for showing three times. I always use rule of three. Okay. So give them a couple of days. And then I would call Wendy probably on the Wednesday and say, hey, Wendy, it's Sandra. It was a pleasure meeting you. And as promised, I was going to get to you with some properties. So that property that I was mentioning to you, they're not ready to list. I was trying to get to you to sneak in to take a look at it and they're not ready to show it yet. Having said that though, I did a little bit of research and there are other properties in the area. When would you like to take a look at them? Okay, call with information. Always call with information. Don't just call about the house. There's a ton of other homes that could be better for sale in the area, okay? So call them with information versus. Now, if Wendy doesn't want to take a look at that, oh, you know what, I saw that home actually. So no thanks, I don't, I don't want to take a look at that. And you say, okay, no problem. I'll continue to be in touch. I'll let you know when that house is ready, okay? Mm -hmm. And I can call her up, oh my God, Wendy, another home came up for sale. It's not yet that home, they're not ready. Or they decided not to sell because if they're maybe BSing, because sometimes we BS, mm -hmm. uh, the little white lies just to get us going, right? So sometimes we do that. And so that's okay too, you know, like if that's the case, oh shoot, they decided to not put it on the market, but there is another home that came up for sale. Always call them with properties. When do you want to take a look at it? Always call them with that. An easy and simple way to monitor your prospects or your, your potential buyers or sellers is to put them on prospect match on MLS. On MLS, right, does everybody know the prospect match system? But don't email the client, email yourself. Okay, so on prospect match, I would put Wendy and then her phone number, 416-123-45. So that when the email comes to me, I see it comes Wendy with her phone number. 
So I don't have to go searching for her in case I'm not, I don't have the paperwork because maybe I haven't put her on my CRM because I'm not sure if she's, if I'm going to put her sorry, on Sorry, can you say that one word? I just got like the most important message. I'm so sorry. I missed that. <laughs> Let's help Wendy out. Someone else, <laughs> someone else tell me, tell what, what I just said. Let's see how many everybody else is listening. Yeah. So I'm you can give the opportunity to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I was not listening. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so okay, so, so when you follow up, you put Wendy. No, no, let's let them talk. Let's let them talk, man. Yes. Right, and uh, instead of Wendy or Sandra, put your information, your name, and your phone. Uh, I mean, your clients. Right. Your leads uh, name. Have an okay. email. Have okay, an okay, email okay, to okay. yourself. Right. So when you're creating that prospect match, I'm going to put your name on top, Wendy. Right. And I'm going to put your phone number so that when and I'm going to email oh. it to me. I'm not going to email the matches to you. I'm emailing the matches to me. Oh, I like that. So now I'm going to see Wendy pop up in my email with your phone number. I don't have to go digging for you because I might not put you on my CRM right. just yet. Maybe maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Right. Some some people say, oh yeah, I'm putting it on this, the CRM. But regardless, no matter where I'm at, when the email comes in on my phone, I can call you from wherever. Maybe I'm that's waiting good. for the kids two minutes or whatever. Yeah, that's a good okay. thing. Set in your paperwork's all. Which is how I, that's how I used to do it. Okay, so that's what I coach my agents on because I was able to manage at least 30 prospects at any given time like this. Yeah, some of them were good, some of them were not, but they were, I put them all in there because they were shots in the dark and then it was up to me how I was going to close them. So you put the phone number. Now I can call Wendy. Oh my God, a new property came up. I just wanted to let you know, this this property over here, blah, blah, blah. It's got these details. When do you want to take a look at it? Okay. And you can do that for buyers and you can do it for sellers. You can do it for both. So if you're door knocking, just a little bit of an aside, you're door knocking and someone says, yeah, I'm thinking about making a move, but maybe, maybe in a couple of months, no problem. You take that seller, put it on your prospect match, and you put it on there to email you. And what are you doing? You're treating them as if they're a buyer in their own area. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's keep going. So follow up with potential clients, be interested versus interesting, always give them information. And don't ask, well, when do you wanna take a look at some homes? Always call them with info, okay? Because that's the biggest thing too, eh? when it comes to following up, I'm just calling to follow up. Well, I don't care. Right. What's in it for me? Always call them with something valuable to them. Very important. Otherwise, that's it. You're done. Yeah, for example, one of the best things for follow-up is just let them know that there's a certain one to do the price reduction. That's another one, too. Yeah, really yeah exactly. Okay, always call them with information. All right? Awesome. Good stuff. When and how often should you follow up? Well, we already talked about that, okay? Each person's gonna be a little bit different. It, the way that you follow up with them is going to be a little bit a little bit different. So if Wendy needs to make a move by the end of May, well, I'm gonna be in close contact with her. I'm gonna maybe call you every day, right? But if Frida is looking to move next year, well, I'm gonna look like, her, I'm gonna look like a crazy stalker if I'm calling her every day. Hey, Frida, how's it going? She's not ready. I can call her maybe once every couple of weeks, you know, once a week or whatever. So pay attention, be mindful of the rhythm that you set in place based on the person's needs. Okay. All right. Administration. We talked about this, make detailed notes, place notes in your listing file. If you're doing an open house for another realtor, give them a copy. Okay. Any questions? All right, here's the actual script itself. Anybody confused about how to, to, to greet someone? So let's play, who wants to play? Who wants to give it a go? <clears throat> okay, Mo, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were saying for yourself, Mo. No. All right, Mo, great, I come to your open house. Hi, Mo. <laughs> He's nudging. Go ahead, go ahead, Netta. So Mo, let's 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 practice Mo. So I knock. And you come and open the door. What are you gonna say to me? 
Oh, hi. Welcome to my open house. My name is Mo. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Awesome. So feel here comfortable and take a tour. And I'm here. So if you have any other questions, you can thank ask you me. Thank you for coming by and welcome. I realize most, you forgot a, a line here. I realize most real, realtors ask you to sign in at this time. I prefer you, that you enjoy the tour of this I home. I like that. I really like Let's that. Let's repeat. So repeat after me, Mo. Okay. I realize most realtors ask you to sign in at this time. Yeah, I realize most realtors ask you to sign sign in and you come in. But uh, I do prefer to do it after your tour. either. 
do you live in this area or no i don't i'm all the way out in bradford okay mm -hmm. so uh i know some houses in this area mm -hmm. that might be those to your criteria excellent and then uh if you prefer would you please provide me your email address okay and then I'm going, to, I'm going to remind you for a second. You see how polite he is? Really nice. But I want you to take leadership, okay? What I'm going to do for you is this. I'm going to grab your email, and I'm going to, I'm going to let you know as soon as that property comes up, okay? What's your email? What's your cell number? You have to take leadership. There's a little bit of that. But I know that we're raised, most of us, are raised to be very polite and very considerate, right? And I know certain cultures are a little bit more than others, and Canadians in particular, we're very polite, very polite. Ask for it, okay? Ask for it. Um, you have to take that leadership, and you have to give people options. So I give I give an um, example of my, I have my second root canal. So I my very first root canal, I was, I was freaking out, freaking out. Because everybody was telling me, I was even working out with my trainer that morning, he was, oh, that's the worst ever. This was a couple of years ago when I had my first one. That's the worst ever. It's so painful. I looked at him, I said, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Shut up. Don't tell me that. I'm already freaking out. I don't know if I have to have a root canal tonight or not, but my tooth is bugging me. I got to go. What am I going to do? I got to go. I said, shut up. So I continued on my stair master and kept going, right? But I did go that, that evening to see my, or that afternoon to see my dentist. And lo and behold, at that time, I did need a root canal. And I'm terrible with freezing. So I'm, I'm, I'm dying because I'm listening to what, my, what everybody was saying to me about how painful it is, right? So when he did this root canal, he, um, he told me, um, so he says, you know, he freezes me at that time. He me like, at that time, it was six needles. It was like terrible. So, and then he said, oh, you really are having a hard time freezing. There's a technique. I don't use, he goes, there's a technique out there that I can make this pain free. I don't use it often, but we're going to do it today. And it involves going in and doing this like that, right? I said, okay. As soon as he told me that at that time, I was like, relaxed. I was relaxed. Now, when I went in for my next one, I had everybody freaking out. Oh, I got it. Oh, good luck with the, the root canal. Oh, it's so gross. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be pain free. And why do I know that? My dentist took leadership. He didn't say the very first time he didn't say, Oh, well, you're really having a hard time freezing. Um, there's a technique. Um, what do you think? Do you want me if, if, if you would like, I can use that technique. I'd be like, Oh my God, dude, like I'd be really upset. He took leadership. He told me what we were going to do, how we were going to do it, and that's that. He took leadership. Because he took leadership, he made me calm. Not just for that one, but for this one too. Hopefully I never need another one ever again. So people are begging to be led. Please do not misunderstand. So lead, okay? And, and I love that you're so polite and thank you because I'm, I'm using you as an example because we all do that with your permission. If you don't mind, if you're okay with it, I could, I could do this. I can put you on my database. I could put, I could do this. No, what I'm going to do for you is, or this is what we're going to do. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Give me your email because I'm gonna, I'll give you a, a sh or, and your cell number, and I'll give you a shout as soon as that property comes up. I want you to have first dibs at it. Done. Okay. Take that leadership, guys. Any questions for me? No? All right, Mo, thank you so much. I really appreciate you playing along and allowing us to practice through you, so thank you. All right, last but not least, guys, Tips for holding a flawless open house. Look at this. Yes, bake cookies or buy them. <laughs> Remember I was saying right at the yeah. end of the class, we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> so make a good first impression and provide professional information and handouts. Okay, that, that's a good tip because if you don't know what you're doing, obviously they're, they're gonna deem you as uncredible and just toss you to the side and, and make fun of you when they leave. Okay, be ready. Now, uh, we cannot always know all the answers <clears throat> and that's okay. But if they ask you an answer, 
that you're not familiar with, you just say, you know what, that's a really good question. I'm going to get back to you with that. All right, and that's it. Uh, clean and declutter, like what Mo was saying. Mo likes to go in an hour before to make sure everything is okay. Stage the home, right? This is again what Mo was saying. So stage the home with, with furniture and or accessories. So if it's a vacant home and, and augmented reality is something that you could do to help this property sell, then do that, okay? Remove personal items and protect expensive or sentimental belongings. So if there's anything, make sure you get rid of it and, and discuss that with the seller ahead of time. They, they don't have to start repacking, but they're gonna be moving and packing anyways. So they might as well start packing and get rid of this stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Put it away, put it in storage so it's safe. Remove pets. I know pets are our family, you know, but at the same time though, it becomes uncomfortable. Like that open house with the Great Dane, not too many people wanted to come in, let me tell you. Uh, and also regarding to remove personal items mm -hmm. and stuff, make sure to remove all of the things that it is religious. Mm -hmm. For example, sometimes, you do an open house for a Muslim house and then you want to enter the house or like big letters, Arabic letters or something. It could offend or, or scare some could, people. Could, or even like maybe Christian, it doesn't matter. Any yeah, religion, no. Anything yeah. that it's gonna. You want to do the stuff us. that's, yeah, you the have stuff to that's do everything overdone. possible to right. make them like. It's Appealing, it's that's the right. place that I am gonna buy. You're right. You're absolutely right. We're not talking about like little items here and there. We're talking about big shrines and things like that. Mm -hmm. I remember. One house that I I, um, I did a showing on, you open the closet and you saw this guy with this big afro, it's a big photo of him, with all these like weird, in, like smelling incenses like going and <laughs> lights, red lights all around him. I was like, oh my God, what is that? I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was not anybody recognizable. My clients got weirded out, they didn't buy the house. They were like, oh my God, this is like voodoo. Yeah. <laughs> it's voodoo, we don't wanna live here. Yeah. No, this is just some, <laughs> so, but you know what, but it does, it, weird, it weirds them out. The other thing too is guys, I know I, and this is, if, sometimes people enjoy having nudes uh, in the house. Uh, when one guy I remember had a photo of his wife topless, uh, it, but on his bedside, it's like, uh, okay, you got to put that away. <laughs> what about artwork that's nude? In some cases, you got to be careful. It depends on. Because I just, yeah, and there was like a picture of, and it was very nice, but then after I saw the pictures that I, it, thankfully I didn't have to put it on MLS, but I was like, wow, that really stands out. I know. You know? So I was like. You got, hmm. I, there have been times where I've asked them to, to change or remove it altogether. If it's really, because even though it's artistic, it mm -hmm. might be a little offensive That's to some people. Right. Maybe like want to strategically place fig <laughs> leaves on there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, sometimes, you know, yeah. it, it's just one of these things. It's like what Mo was saying. You want to make the house most appealing to your average buyer. Some people are not going to get offended. Some people don't care. Some people are going to get offended. Like I don't care about the guy with the afro. I'm like good for them. Oh, that's kind of cool. What incense are they using? Yeah. I'm I'm okay with that, right? But my clients were like, oh, it's voodoo, and they were like, oh no, no, this house is right. creepy. Okay. So you want it. You want to make it. You know, you want to stage it where it's appropriate for everybody. But it, it's one thing to live in the home. It's another thing to show your home. It's two different things. The minute you put your home for sale or your client puts your home for their home for sale, it's no longer their home. It's a it's a showpiece. The other thing I want, like a lot of people have their pet pictures everywhere. And I like to remove them because I don't want people to come in who don't like pets. Or thinking, allergies. Exactly, thinking that it's really yeah. dirty. Because, because they will they will think that. Right. You know, or oh, there was a dog here, or there was a cat here, oh we can't have this one. We got allergies, we got this and that, and meanwhile the house is spotless, right? right? Yeah, no, there's all kinds of things. And it, and you know, anyways, we, we do our best. That's all I can say. Because there are some situations where you just don't want to um, you don't want to offend your client either, your seller. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a delicate delicate line, guys. Do your best. That's all I can say. And don't push. When in doubt, you know, don't push back up on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Spread the word. Word of mouth advertising is always the best. Put up lots of signs. How many signs, guys? Six, Six to, to ten. ten. Exactly. Let there be light. Remember, Mo, you were saying first thing, turn on all the lights, even if it's sunny outside. Turn the lights on. And yes bake cookies or buy them, all right? 
And that's it for today, guys. Thanks, Sandra. My that was absolute great. pleasure. Thanks. It was so nice to see you guys. That was awesome. Any questions? No. No. Awesome. Thanks so much. My absolute pleasure. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Nice to see you, darling. Likewise. Amanda? See you Monday. For sure. Sonia, before you go, Bella, do you yes. have any handouts? Pardon me? Do you have the handouts for this? I do not. Okay, I'm going to send them to you then, okay? Okay, unless you want to give them to me on Monday. It's up to you. What do you prefer? Um, well, you can try and send them to me if it's no trouble, and if it doesn't work out, okay. then I'll pick it up. Sounds good. Can you do me a huge favor if you're by your computer right now? Just send me a quick message, and then when I go downstairs, sure. I'll send it to you. My concern is by the time I get downstairs, people ask me other questions. No worries. Thank you. Are you kidding? My pleasure. Nice to see you, darling. We missed you Bye -bye. Monday. We'll see you Monday, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Bye, darling. Bye. Yeah, hold on. Let me just first stop this. Yeah. Where is the... She's now logged on. Hold on, but I want to make sure. There you go. Oh,